Welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. I make videos on career, education, and lifestyle. And a lot of my content is in the analytics space. So today's video is actually going to be pretty informative. So if you clicked on it, you're in for a good one. So today we'll be going over whether a master's in business analytics is worth it for you or not. I think this is a very important topic, especially since a master's comes with possible debt and a possible change in trajectory of your career. I think it's really important to make sure that you're making a well-informed decision on what the next step looks like for you. So thank you for being here. Please hit that subscribe button if you find this video helpful at all and hit that like because it really helps get this video out to more people and really helps the channel. Thank you for being here and without further ado, let's get into the video. I do want to note that whenever I say MSBA, I just mean the short form of Masters in Business Analytics. Let's get into the first topic of the video which is what is business analytics? Now, there's a lot of definitions out there and there's a lot of confusion on what this even is. So I'd like to define it specifically for this video. So when I say business analytics, I mean being able to define a problem that a particular business or company is experiencing. And then being able to use data that is available to understand how you can solve that problem. So this looks like finding data, digging into it, finding the solution on maybe what the company can do to improve their performance or whatever their end objective is. And lastly, the sort of insight part, right? So now that you've analyzed the data, what is the insight that that company can take away and integrate into the business to be able to improve it or whatever their end goal is um, that they have in mind. This could include statistics, programming, and also having a general industry or business knowledge so that you can operate in the specific context of that company. Data can also be a very challenging area for many businesses just because of how hard it is to find talent in this area. It's more important than ever to be able to take data, distill the insight that the company needs and deliver that so that executives can make very strategic decisions to be able to advance their objectives and end goals. The second topic is the skills, right? What skills will you learn in an analytics program? One of the things that you learn is statistics. This involves some basic statistics, inferential statistics, you know, things like hypothesis testing, sampling, and more. It's really important to have a foundational statistics knowledge, especially when you get into developing models, which will be kind of related to our second skill that you'll learn, which is programming. Having a foundational programming knowledge is very important um, as you'll be constructing different models to test. And then the statistics knowledge also comes in when you're interpreting results or even designing sort of what you need to even model and test, right? So it all sort of flows in together. The third skill that you might learn is visualization. Now this is also really important because sometimes jobs in industry do have some sort of reporting element and it's really beneficial if you have some sort of visualization toolkit that typically comes in an MSBA program. Now this could look like learning Tableau or learning Power BI. I personally learned Tableau in my MSBA program, so you know, either or you might be exposed to some sort of programming language, or you might also use R and ggplot to also visualize some of your findings. All right, now that we've covered what business analytics is and what type of skills that you will learn, let's get into what an ideal analytics candidate looks like. I do want to pause here. If you found the video helpful so far, please take a second and hit that subscribe button or hit that like button. It really, really helps my channel. All right, the first criteria is Someone who is genuinely interested and passionate about the business world, about data, about statistics, about programming. Now this is really simple but also very important. People don't realize that a lot of the work involves the four things I did just mention, right? There's a lot of things that come into what 
it might look like after you graduate, right? So it's important to be genuinely interested and curious about the field of data and analytics. This is really important because I would not recommend that you force yourself into anything that you're not genuinely interested in and passionate about because an MSBA program is typically pretty intensive. So you want to be certain that you have some passion and some interest in the field. All right, my second criteria is also very simple. Someone who wants to work in the field of analytics and data science, etc. You must, you know, generally if you're pursuing this program, it makes sense that you'd want to do this after you graduate. If you might not necessarily be interested in pursuing this after you graduate, then you might explore other options such as courses or certificates if you generally want to continue to increase your data knowledge but you don't see yourself working in the field. Of the two criteria that I did mention, notice a lot of the things that I didn't mention. I did not mention that you needed to have a math background, a programming background, a statistics background, or any sort of technical background because you really don't. You just need to have the interest to be able to learn the skills. Now, I myself did not have a technical background whatsoever. I came from the field of psychology and then I got my MSBA degree and then now I work in people analytics, right? So you really don't need to have a very deep technical expertise before you begin because generally a master's program and MSBA assumes that you don't know too much, not every program, but a good amount of programs, and they'll really help you start building the foundational knowledge from the beginning. In this section, I do also want to discuss the type of people that generally join these full-time MSBA programs, typically those that have little to no work experience, typically those who are very early in their career. And that's sort of what a lot of these programs are designed for. But there's also other programs, especially if you're sort of mid or later in your career that you can explore that include sort of online master's degrees that will give you flexibility in case you also want to work while you study, right? And a lot of these programs give you flexibility for you to work and study at the same time. For international students, I also want to mention that typically a master's in business analytics program will be STEM certified. So that will allow you to apply for the STEM extension and get those two extra years of work experience under your belt and have three chances at the H1B instead of one. All right, the fourth point of discussion is where can you work? Now, the really good thing about having foundational data skills is that you can work in any industry doing whatever you're interested in. And that's very exciting, especially for someone early in their career, because you might not know which industry that you want to work in. And having a master's in business analytics will enable you to be pretty industry agnostic. You can work anywhere. You can work in consumer goods. You can work in transportation. You can work in healthcare. You can work in consulting. You can literally work anywhere. And that's such an incredible thing to have as you move forward in your career. All right, say you're really interested in cars, you can find companies that sell cars, such as CarMax, Vroom, Carvana, Enterprise, so many more, right? And you can work for these companies and you might get to analyze what make and model of cars sell really well. What time of the year do cars sell really well? What kind of consumer profiles? are our cars selling to. I mean, there's literally a whole world of things that you can get to work on and analyze. And that's pretty exciting that you can combine your passion and your data skills to work anywhere you want. Say you're really interested in fashion. You can work for Louis Vuitton, you can work for Nike, you can work for a little lemon, you can work at so many different places and analyze what might be selling really well, right? For instance, um, when should a particular product be released? There's infinite possibilities of things that you can analyze and combine your passion with your skills to really be able to better the company that you're working at. All right, the fifth point of discussion is ROI. 
So what is your return of investment like if you join a master's in business analytics program? The global big data and business analytics market size was valued at 198 billion in 2020 and is projected to go to about 684 billion by 2030. Now that's more than tripling, right? The market size. So this field is not slowing down anytime soon and it will continue to grow and explode over the next decade. All right, now that we've established that this program will be sort of relevant in the pretty distant future, what could the cost of a master's in business analytics program look like? Now this is a definitely a sticky topic depending on your financial situation. So it's really important to assess the exact fees that go into attending a program such as this. So some of the things that you need to consider are whether a school is private or public, where it's located, what kind of jobs can people get after. There's a whole host of things that you can consider when evaluating whether their cost is matching up to the value that you can get after the program. Now, generally from my research, I've seen that, you know, some of the state schools start around 25, 30,000 and some of the private schools go up to 70, 80, 90,000 dollars. And that might just be your tuition and fees. You also need to factor in your living expenses and general other expenses that come with attending a master's program full time. All right, the final sort of point is what will you make out of a program like an MSBA? So this is highly variable and encompasses a lot of different things that are pretty unique to each applicant. Now, if you have work experience, what kind of skills do you have, how can you differentiate yourself in the market, these are all the things that come into play when, de when determining what your compensation might be post-graduation. Now, generally, I've seen that programs, graduates coming out of these programs start from anywhere from 70,000 going up well into the six figures, right? So it really depends on cost of living, on your specific skills. There's, it's just almost impossible to say exactly what you might make after you graduate from an MSBA program. I would also really advise you to look at the career outcomes page of the program that you might be considering because generally they'll publish what the average salary might be of someone coming out of the program, where do they work, what kind of companies do they work for. I mean, there's a whole host of information that you'll typically find on a website and if you can't find it, please reach out to someone in admissions to figure out how you can get this information because that's an extremely critical part in deciding where you want to attend. I hope you found this video helpful. I myself attended a master's in business analytics program and honestly, I loved it. <laughs> I don't think that I would have the job that I do without attending a MSBA program and I got so much out of it and it's really helped me in my career and helped me transition from psychology to analytics to my work in people analytics and I truly, truly, really enjoy what I do and I'm so lucky to have found a career that I'm passionate about. Hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please take a second to subscribe and like and share. I would really appreciate it. It helps me so much. So thank you for being here and stay tuned for my next video next Wednesday. Bye.